Hello third grade families, thank you for tuning back in to our video segments as we are making our way through the Kentucky Core Academic Standards this year in third grade. Uh, a couple of other things, or rather a couple of new things I want to show you uh, since we had our last video. I want to talk about this word, if I can spell it out here. Estimation. Estimation is kind of the base of this unit but it's going to be overshadowed by rounding. Uh, estimation is when we're talking about the keyword about. Let's say Matthew has 97 baseball cards. Uh, you could say Matthew has about 100 even though it's not an exact amount. It gives you an approximate number of how many baseball cards he has. Uh, but in order to estimate anything we have to use another skill that we're going to work on developing this year, and that skill is rounding. Okay, now the majority of this video is going to be about rounding because you can't estimate, you can't use the word about without being able to round mentally. Hopefully this video is going to show your kids how to use some mental math rather than having to pull out pencil, paper, or God forbid their uh, calculator. So. First thing I'd like to do is just a quick reminder. Uh, basic place value columns we're going to be using this year are going to be our ones, tens, and hundreds. Uh, remember, we read the place value columns from right to left. I'll put an O for ones, a T for tens, and an H for hundreds, just for time's sake. And to start out really simple, uh, I'm just going to choose the number 47. Hopefully that's showing up on the camera. Uh, I've got 47 here. Now what I tell the kids to do the first step is to find their place value. What do I mean by that? Normally when I give them a problem for rounding, I'm going to tell them, hey guys, I need you to round this to the nearest 10. So if we're rounding this to the nearest 10, they'll find their place value, circle the digit. Next, they're going to look at the digit to the right and they're going to underline it. Okay, now is where we run into a lot of confusion. So kids, if you're with your parents, listen up here. Okay. The underlying number is really the number that's going to tell us if we're going to round up or down. So if the underlying number is 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, the circle's going to stay the same. If the underlying number is 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, we're going to add 1 to the circle number. So in this case, the digit is 7. We know that falls between 5 and 9, so we're going to be adding 1. 4 plus 1. It's going to give you a 5. Now the next step, all the digits that come after the circle number, in this case there's only one, they're going to turn to 0. So you would round 47 to 50 and you could estimate and know that 47 is about 50. Let's do a couple more problems here. I'll try to wrap this up early for time's sake. Uh, let's go 416. And let's imagine that I've told the students I wanted them to round to their hundreds. And being the good little listeners they are, they've already circled their digit. Now, they know to go to the right and to underline it. Now, as I discussed in the previous problem, if the underlying number is 0 through 4, the circle will stay the same. If the underlying number is 5 through 9, you're going to be adding 1 to the circle. In this case, the underlying digit is 1. That falls in between 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, which the rule tells us our circle will stay the same. Now, any digits to the right, as we just discussed, will turn to zero. We've rounded 416 and it rounds down to 400. We could also estimate 416 is about 400. One last uh, thing, well, actually we'll do two more problems and then wrap it up. Uh, let's imagine our number is, goodness, 563. But now, instead of the biggest column, which I've normally told them to do so far, I'm going to tell them, hey guys, I need you to round your tens. So they're going to find that digit, they're going to circle it, and they're going to go to the right and underline it. They're going to recognize that the 3 falls in between 0 through 4. And we know that 0 through 4, the circle will stay the same. All the digits to the right change to 0. All the other numbers are going to stay the same. So we would round 560 up, 563, when we round it to the nearest 10, we'll come out to 560. 
one last thing. Uh, last problem we're out, I promise. Uh, let's scratch that. Let's go 874. Okay, now I've told my students, guys, I need you to round it to the nearest hundred. They're going to circle their hundreds, and they know to underline the digit to the right. If this digit is 0 through 4, the circle will stay the same. If this digit is 5 to 9, you're going to be adding 1. So in this case, I'm going to add 1 because 7 falls in 5 through 9. That's going to be 9. And we know what happens to the digits after the circle number. They turn to 0. So we could say 874 rounds to 900, or 874 if we're estimating is about 900. Now if you're viewing this video on my blog, just below here, I've placed a couple of videos. One is uh, a really catchy song helping the kids rhyme I use in class. Another one is a catchy song that helps the kids to remember their place value columns. Uh, if you're not viewing this on my blog and you're checking it out on YouTube, uh, if you search for rounding rap and place value rap, you'll find both of the uh, songs that I have been referring to. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, I couldn't be successful without your help. And we're all here for the kids. Thank you.